It's time to mind your business with me, Jamila Lodge. Tune in to find out how to mind your business with BEDC, special guest entrepreneurs, industry experts, and more. Brought to you by BEDC. Bermuda business starts here. So welcome to the show. Um, of course, this is Mind Your Business. I'm your host, Jamila, and you are Neoka Francis, yes. and you are owner and founder of Blue Lily Consulting. Yes. So we're going to talk a little bit about your entrepreneurial journey today, but before we get started, just tell me a little bit about yourself. Well, as you said, I'm Neoka Francis. I'm owner um, of Blue Lily Consulting, which is an end-of-life consulting business, and we do services as well. I am an only child to both of my parents, and I have one child myself. Okay. Both parents are deceased at this time of my life, which has pushed me to do what I'm doing with Blue Lily Consulting. Okay. Um, for me, having one child, I don't want him to go through grieving and the stress of putting my affairs together um, when it's my time. Yeah. So this has been a journey for me. Um, I do have a full-time job, and I've just made 17 years. Oh, wow. Also in customer service, okay. which I love and which has also been a great help with, I guess, dealing with people and their journeys always in life. Because I work in insurance, so mm -hmm. I would... I didn't just do the insurance at the end of the day when you're talking to them over the phone. Right. I actually became a listening ear of someone they spoke with and they were able to hang up and say thankful, thank you, because mm -hmm. I gave some useful information to. Okay. And weirdly enough, it all had to do with either them preparing for retirement or their end of life because somebody else is dying mm -hmm. or something's happening to them. And that was, I can say, most of the time I've actually talked to people. Really? So is that how you came to opening this business or starting this business? Did, did you say, oh, wait a minute, there's a need for this kind of support? That helped. Okay. It definitely helped. And it made it easier as well, um, being that I can have that conversation already with most people. Mm -hmm. um, but if a lot of people dying close to me and a lot of people I've seen pass away and their families going through the situation also helped with me pushing this business mm -hmm. forward as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think it's it's a topic that, like, most of us try to shy away from. We yes. know it's promised to everybody, right? <laughs> yes. We know it's going to happen, but you don't know when. Exactly. And so sometimes having the conversation about death, it's like, yeah, we're not going to talk about that. Exactly. So it's interesting. I do think that there is a need for that type of support because it can be overwhelming, right? Yes. I mean, you're dealing with the death of a loved one. So you're grieving, but then you got to figure out what to do and how to do it and how to bring it all together. So how do you, um, with Blue Lily, support people or families in, in, in that role? Like what exactly are the services that you, you provide? So the support on from Blue Lily um, going to each person is either individuals or the family on a hill. Okay. So if it's an individual that's actually trying to put their self together because they've come e become ill and it's just them, we support you through putting your affairs together. We'll support you for emotionally okay. um, wise. Mm -hmm. If you need someone as a companion to go in to the different offices that mm -hmm. you need to go to, we'll be there for okay. that support as well. So it's not just consulting. We're actually supporting you through each step if you need it okay. um, along the way. For the family, um, again, if they need the support or someone to talk to, if there's an issue, we can become, I guess, mediator for the loved one who's passing mm. at the time, mm -hmm. just kind of consoling the family, letting them know what the, the person wants if we have their needs already. So it, it makes it a little easier for the one that's passing and the family members. It, right. It's some sort of calm yeah at the end of the day because it could be hard it's it's a lot that the families kind of go through in that situation yeah for sure I mean I'm thinking about you know when my loved ones have passed and then you have to try and steady yourself or put your your grief or grieving on the back burner so that you can go through the process of getting everything sorted and making sure all the affairs are in order so are there any 
what would you recommend to to someone, maybe for themselves or for their family, in terms of how do you start that conversation? Because I don't like I never even thought that there was some end of life kind of consulting or <laughs> that could assist. So how how do you go about letting people know that you are available? And and when they come to you, how what what are you looking for them to say? So when they come to me uh -huh. and I'm letting them know that there is an end of life um, consultancy, we help with putting the funeral together yeah. if you need be. And if you have a budget or you want it within a budget, we'll help with that. And I notice now that seems to be an issue as well. Okay. And then we will help as well with walking you through the situations. If we need to be the admin part, put it together, email it out to a law firm, wherever you need it, we will be that to kind of make the situation a little easier. Mm -hmm. For them to actually talk about it, um, it's little bits and pieces we kind of go off to. Mm -hmm. I kind of start off at looking at again, where we say tomorrow's not promised to anybody. If yeah. we look at how life is turning right now, anything can happen. And do you want the struggle or most of that part put on your loved ones right. where you're going? They may not understand, they may not be able to cope. Mm -hmm. and it's amazing, as strong as we are, some things we can't yeah. deal with when it comes down to it. Yep. And I'm an example for that, for my mom, when it came down to it, I was, okay, we're gonna get yeah, this together, yeah, yeah. get that together. But the minute she passed, like it was, yeah, I was numb, yeah. I wasn't hearing, yeah. I was hearing. Yeah, yeah. Um, my cousin came down from the States, so she was there, she was my support. She mm -hmm. was the person that actually picked up what I didn't pick up, right. or vice versa, because even though I was numb at some point, she was too, yeah. so she was in denial of my mom yeah. passing, so yeah. it kind of worked out for the both of us. And that's the support that most people don't realize that they need. Yeah. And if it's just you, that's what we're here for. Okay. Um, again, it was just me, I'm the only child, so kind of going No, through. Yeah, you didn't exactly. have anybody else to, to get support from. Exactly. You're like, I need help, you know, I need to take a break. And, and if you don't know where to start, yeah. that's why we're here. Yeah. If you don't know where to start, where do we go from her, or what needs to be looked at? And there's a lot of little pieces people forget to even look at. Um, during the pandemic, it was a, a big thing. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of people were able to get their wheels and assets sorted, but then you have those that feel that, oh, I don't own a home or anything. Right, so, so I don't need to I don't need worry to. about that. Right, so you do. It's mm -hmm. still a lot of other things yeah. you want to put in place, and you'll be surprised when it comes down to it, what somebody wants to go for. Yeah, out. yeah. I think it's very interesting from that perspective because some people would think, well, I don't have any major assets. There's nothing that I'm willing away or doing. So I don't need to make any arrangements. Exactly. Right? But I do appreciate that just the funeral alone and what you want and how you want it to go requires some sort of planning. Exactly. Um, so I do think that if with Blue Lily, you are able to provide that kind of support or guidance for families or for individuals, right? Yeah. Because it's like, <laughs> like I said, we all <laughs> got to go through it. We're all going to do it. But it's like, how do you get your mind around that idea and then be willing to say, well, today after lunch, I'm going to go into Blue Lily. <laughs> And we're going to talk about <laughs> what I need to happen for when I pass. Exactly. Like, that's like, so, you got to the level of, like, <laughs> self-awareness is, like, on 10 when it comes to that. So. And agreed, it is. You, you definitely have to be mentally ready. But my goal is to not make it seem so morbid, yeah. but kind of make it fun. So it's in a steps way, and I kind of, to me, my... my um, Sorry, my saying is yeah. your end of life is your your ultimate chapter in your life. That's yeah. that's your last chapter. How yeah. do you want to go? How do you want to make it? At the end of the day, most of us tend to think, okay, we leave it to our loved ones. Yeah. But at the end of the day, what do you want? Yeah. It's still it's still you about have you. The ability. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. You have you can fix it any way you want. Mm -hmm. Um, these are my colors. This is what I want. Yeah. yeah. Um, and if you put it on paper, then at the end of the day, there's no fight. Right. Um, it might be more than one child or mm -hmm. sister, and 
one says, no, mom would want it this way, or right, dad right, wants right. it this way, and the I other one's like, want. no, I, want, I know what they want. So if it's actually in writing, then it's set. Yeah. I also call it, you get the last say in life. Ah. And you know so, someone, we exactly, like how that last exactly. word. So. <laughs> you get the last say. So you're not just putting your funeral together. Um, you get to write a little something to your loved ones yeah. that you can that can actually be spoken out at yeah. the time of your funeral. So yeah. it's other little things you can do to not just think, oh my God, I'm just putting, I'm gotta put my funeral together. Yeah, yeah. You know, I don't want to be doing this. It's morbid. But I look at it like this: if you like to dress up or you like to be clean, you this is how I want it. Yeah, make sure I have yeah, this. Make yeah. sure I do that. So yeah. it can be fun. It can mm-hmm. be. Um, a little different, yeah. Some people still say it's morbid. Yeah. But you want to make sure that when you're thinking of your life policy, mm-hmm. this is part of your life right. policy. This is part of all your end of life, all of your affairs. This is part of it. When you want to think of retirement, all of this is part, part of, of it. it. Yeah. So it shouldn't be something we shy away from right. or run from, you know. I think it's just the change in how we think of it, yes. right? Because nobody wants to die, really. Exactly. You know, most of us don't. <laughs> Um, so when it comes to that, it's just changing your vision. I like the way you described it. It's like you get to write your own story, and this is the last chapter. How do you want your story to end? I, exactly. It's, it's nice to think of it that way. It's like I get to say what the final days are going to look like for myself. Right. right. Um, and I do. I, I would agree. We always tell people, like, even when you're starting a business and you're doing your business planning, right, especially if there's a partner involved, exactly. it's like write it down. Yeah. Because... <laughs> Because if you don't, you're going to be like, she said. And you're going to be like, no, no, she said. <laughs> but if it's written, both of you have the ability to look at it and say, okay, no, this is what we agreed. This is how we're going to go forward. Exactly. And then it takes all that guessing and the stress. That's where the stress comes from. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Trying to figure it out. You're like, what well, I think. And no, I think. And mm-hmm. then everybody mad at the end of the day. So um, it makes a lot of sense. So. It's interesting to me that, like you said, you are in insurance, so you're having these conversations with people. Do you think, um, outside of just supporting them with insurance, you're having like counseling sessions, if you will? Well, that's yes, what I'm yeah. Call it, with, <laughs> with people, and so do you think that that's just an innately part a part of who you are and it allows you to be able to provide the services with blue lily almost naturally or organically it's not anything you had to learn how to do most definitely i've actually been that person growing up i would say most of it so again i've lost people throughout Mm -hmm. my life i've seen families who's lost people i've been there just talking and helping so it started from young very young hmm. at at the time and it's definitely natural for me to be able to help where I can if I can and how I do it I've been in the customer service for 17 years and I enjoy it mm-hmm. I I like what I do and you do feel inside a little rewarding way when you're able to make that person feel comfortable mm-hmm. or get to the girl where they wanted to be or the it's soft, mm-hmm. you know, you fixed it. Mm-hmm. And it's all to say in this type of business is rewarding, but it is. Yeah. Because it's a lot. Mm-hmm. Grieving, you can, nobody knows what stage you're going to be at when someone passes, because mm-hmm. there's a lot of different stages mm-hmm. to grief. Like I say, for me, I was numb, so I needed that person there because my hearing was in and out, yeah. believe it or not. Yeah. You know, yeah. you you hear, you don't hear because you're going off. Mm-hmm. You have some people that are angry at mm-hmm. the time and they could be angry for a whole lot of different reasons. Right. When someone passes, a lot of things come to come back. Yeah, a lot yeah. of, I wish I could, I, yeah, I wish I didn't. I should have said this. Exactly. I, I didn't apologize, you know, right. all of this. Yeah. And for me I had that afterwards mm-hmm. I had I wish I would have known mm-hmm. before we had two weeks that's all we had me and my mom knowing mm-hmm. what she had two weeks and that was it wow so when you're in that position it's definitely difficult more reason why we should definitely put our affairs in order ahead of time right you know because right. when you're at that point again you're still going through emotions you're in shock of finding out that this person now has a terminally it, yeah. ill disease yeah and they have a short time to live. So, so when, when, okay, so 
in a situation like that where the person is terminally ill, so you do have sort of a timetable. In some instances, you don't. Like me, I don't know. Exactly. You know, who knows? I could go outside, God forbid, knock on wood. You know? <laughs> um, and something can happen. So what is your recommendation to people? When should they come see you? Like, should it be scheduled or by the time you get 40 or 50, you need to come in? You know, same right. like when you go get your mammograms and all your checkups. It's like, by this time, you need to do this. What would be your advice or suggestion to people about when they should reach out to Blue Lily right. to, to get support? So when I started looking at it, I actually said I'm going to go from the ages of 35 to 55. Yeah, I kind of felt wrong then you're kind of mature enough to kind of look at things. But then I also look at the minute you're legal, 18, Yeah. the minute you got a job, your insurance is in place, people already telling you need life insurance, mm -hmm. that's the time you should start because it's all part of your end of life. Again, when you look at life insurance, that's basically saying your life insurance, in case you pass, this is who gets yeah, this it. Is what, yeah. So that's a start to it at the end of the day. So okay. I think when you're mentally ready, even if it starts with a little, a little thing, I have di advanced directives set us the hospital, you know, mm -hmm. that little piece of paper could be a life saving situation. It can also help with what you want mm -hmm. as a person of in case you're in a state that you need tubes, you can't talk. Right, right, you right, know, right. That helps. And again, sixteen, eighteen, we've got bike accidents, right. things happening. So the sooner the better. Okay. okay. And again, you don't have to start off with everything right away it could be piece at a time because again this could be overwhelming when you're yeah. starting to look at stuff you're at like the end wait a minute i just got my bike license what <laughs> you talking about exactly i'm not thinking about that <laughs> but oh. i think it goes back to what we had said earlier about just changing how you think about death exactly. and the mindset associated with it so you know when you get your life insurance policy well we're going to talk about this as well because exactly. it goes hand in hand mm -hmm. right yeah interesting so i mean that's I feel like there's a whole educational component associated it, with what you do because you got to get people to start thinking differently, it is, right? It is. It's definitely a lot to think about um, for yourself, family-wise, individuals. So think of it as you got two parents and then here you are, got five kids. Yeah. By the time they turn 16, 18, you're not just thinking about you two individually or together. These five kids now got to think of what they want and how yeah. they want it is not just about you and how things are gonna go. Um, for me, I like to get the person individually mm -hmm. so we know exactly what they want. Right. You know. Right. We can then share it with the family if mm -hmm. what you want and if there's any problems or how you know parents like to negotiate yeah. and they find that out. <laughs> so <laughs> they don't really want that. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> This is what we gonna do. That is so funny. Right. All right. So, um, I think what you're doing is fabulous, by the way, because I do think it's needed. But talk to me a little bit about your entrepreneurial journey. Right. You work for in the customer service industry. You're currently working. So, how does what you do for your full time employer differ? in your own business? Like, what are the differences between operating and running your own business and working for someone else? <laughs> so definitely working for someone else is, I guess, again, 17 years or yeah, always yeah, working yeah. for someone else. You're, you're used to it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's a set time. You're in, you're out. You know what you have to do exactly. Running your own business or putting it together, you have all these different changes. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, this is what's on the back end. This has to be done. Now you have to actually do it for yourself. There's nobody doing it. Yeah, and you're it ain't just like, set to um, you. <laughs> yeah. Who, who gonna do it? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and you're just like, for a minute, I'm having a moment like, okay, this needs to be done. Yeah, and just yeah, like yeah. you say it, I'm just like, all oh, right, I got to do this. I, I got to get me. back to this. Yes. <laughs> Let's get back. And now we got to focus, get right. back in hand. And it is... um very time consuming because yeah. once you leave this job you have to kind of switch yourself off yeah to now come over to this job again for me it's it helps because it's customer service mm -hmm. already ever heard so mm -hmm. 
dealing with the people on the phone, emails, mm -hmm. and coming over to her, that piece of it is easy. Okay. And again, comes natural. Right. It's just the, the back end of GAN, putting it all together yourself and the research, which I don't mind when it comes to the researching. Mm -hmm. It's just all everything else that back end that paperwork. I know. <laughs> Looking for this person and getting that person. So for you, what would you say is the most challenging thing that you've had to experience since starting? Um, I want to say the most challenging in the beginning mm -hmm. was probably reaching out to different people and trying to get their feedback or okay. to getting them in. When I started, and I started to say, even now, so just a few weeks ago, yeah. people were asking. And the most I got of three people back to back and all on different days, which is really weird, uh -huh. was, that's morbid. See? Yeah. That, that's morbid. And all I could do was smile and laugh. Yeah. But at the end of the day, not really, because, you know, you want to make sure everything's in order for yourself. Yeah. You want to make sure that nothing's missed or nothing get what you worked for just doesn't get left in the yeah. highway. You want to make sure when you pass away, you're, you're, you're doing it the way you want it to yeah, be done. Yeah. You know, your yeah. choice, we have choices of cremation being buried if right. you're not winning in a charge, not a charge. It's a, it's a lot of things that actually go with it now that you're able to do. And most people don't look at it now. Right. And now that most people are on a budget, you know, you're just saying, oh, well, I can't afford ten thousand. How am I gonna do it? Right. So if you you work on it now rather mm -hmm. than later, it's it helps. It's a difference, you know. Do you have kind of relationships with other, I guess, industry partners, the funeral homes and things like that, so that having those conversations for you would be a lot easier and more seamless than me? I don't know, like who, like, yes, you know, so what to do and what am I supposed to say? <laughs> what am I asking for? Exactly. So when I first started, yes, I reached out to all the funeral homes. That was part of my research. Okay. Um, went out to all the funeral homes. I definitely now speak to David Augustus on and off if it's anything I need to look at or mm -hmm, need. Mm -hmm. um, I go Amos here and there okay. I've, um, to look at anything that's got to be updated, any changes, right. um, anything I need to know. So, and then actually that's another thing on my agenda to now actually get them, go back to them all for anything else since the pandemic's over, for anything else that may have they, changed. Right, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Cause I'm pretty sure since the pandemic, something had something to change. Changed. You know what? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> like he has to have on a mask. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, but why? <laughs> yes. Uh, um, uh, so um, I do want to talk a little bit about your participation in Enterprise Bermuda. Yes. And so you are in that incubator program, and just what what made you decide to apply? Like, what was your thought process behind? signing up for it so it was I think I I wanted to know if I need it more if I'm doing it right mm. or if, you know something else I needed to do and I had actually reached out to Carla Zoo and she was just like I think you should do this and take a read and look at it yeah and I read it I was like I need to do this <laughs> 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 so it was Definitely no if answer, but right, it right. was signed up right away. Let's get into it and see how this can actually work for me. And it definitely has opened my eyes to a lot of things. And it has definitely opened up some things that you kind of close your mind on to. You, mm. you know it, but it just hasn't come to right. the forefront. So you just need it. And it's definitely uplifted me to kind of push now even more right. and a lot farther into what I want to do. Okay. So. so let's talk about, so it's a 12 month program and you know, you have your different steps and there's other 28 other entrepreneurs in it with you. Um, so have you found that there's any kind of synergy or uh, working with the other entrepreneurs? Are there similar things that you guys talk about how to make certain things work? How does that relationship with the other kind of entrepreneurs in the program? So I think that actually works really well because as we're in, everyone's talking about their their different experience yeah. or different intakes or their opinions on different things, which kind of helps you mm -hmm. to kind of sort out how you want to do different things. Mm -hmm. So different opinions definitely work mm -hmm. um, 
for me and being able to sit with the others going through the same thing. Yeah. And I noticed the number one fear is failing. Yeah. And that was something we actually learned. So most of the successful entrepreneurs, they failed before they actually made oh, yeah. it somewhere. So Multiple it's times. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So the fear that I did have of not being, not going any further in the mm-hmm. business or slowing it down just cause, mm-hmm. is actually subsided. It's, oh, it's good. backed off. So it's kind of pushing me a little more. It was a lot more to the fur as well. Yeah. Again, um, like I said, being customer service for 17 years, you hear a lot, you see a lot. Um, in the beginning, it was like, don't put your face out there. And, yeah. You know, all of that. That was definitely a fur for me. Um, kind of growing up and everybody, oh, you're dark or you can't do this or mm. that. So putting the face out there kind of mean it was an option. But then I had to think to myself, do I have that issue in real life? Right. Walking on the street and that problem. I really don't. Right. You know. It's so. amazing how <laughs> society and other people can almost shape how you go throughout life. Exactly. Right? And it's like, what can you use to like, drown out that noise because mm-hmm. it's noise right? exactly and it's getting in the way of e- progress exactly <laughs> so it's like what can you use what tools can you use whether it's self-reflection or other people like whatever um so i just think i think it's interesting that you said that and when you self-reflected yes you said but that doesn't really happen Right, exactly. <laughs> so why am I afraid? Why exactly. am I letting this? And so, doing research and everything else, and you see all sorts of people doing the same thing, yeah. it shouldn't be a problem. No. Like, you know, we shouldn't make it a problem for ourselves. Exactly. And that's and that's the issue, I think, most of us have. And I think one of the things that you are saying that I would 100% agree with, I had another conversation with one of your um, incubatees about manis- manifestation. And yes. you speak in to or move the way you want to be received. And I really do think that that's powerful. Yes. You know what I mean? I think that you have the ability to determine how it's gonna go based on how you move, you know, in your in your own space. So um, that's a, a good point that you brought up, I think. Uh, definitely, and for me, I've always seen it be something. So even though I've, I've during the pandemic, it was a lot of phone calls yeah. um, and different people kind of step back a little bit in after as it slowed down yeah. because you know I think people feel like oh life is getting back to normal and forgetting right. that I'm, this is I'm still part of it. Yeah, yeah. Die. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the pandemic is over. <laughs> right. So it gives me a chance again to reflect on myself and putting it out there, yeah. and again the business, how else I want to do it. Yeah. And being in this enterprise has pushed me to, and it's actually uplifted in what I'm doing. I'm actually excited now about it and putting it out there and, yeah. and going forth and, and, and seeing where it can go and how it can go because I'm excited and kind of helping people in a yeah. different way as well. So I'm like, listen, <laughs> if you're going to take the burden off me, yes, do it, please. <laughs> thank you. And I really do think that people, until they realize right. what it entails and, and what kind of support you can provide, then they're like, yeah, no, 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 no. But then once you realize, oh, wow, you're going to take all of this off of me so I can focus on other things or whatever the case may be, who wouldn't buy it, right? And and that that I think that was the big issue, especially in the beginning. So it was just kind of like, okay, I'm, I'm doing the end-of-life planning yeah, for you. I'm doing yeah. the funeral planning. But them not getting that I can, I'm actually here to support you through yes. it all. I'm actually to support you, your family, however yeah. you need it, because this is all part of the end of life planning. It's all part of the funeral when you put it together, the planning for it. Yeah. That's, that's what it is. It's not just a consultant or not just to be that admin for you and get it done. Yeah, and yeah, that's yeah, yeah. It. You know, it's to be that listening ear. If you need a cry, if you just need someone to sit there mm. just because that's, that's what we're for. Oh, I love that. <laughs> so what do you want Blue Lily Consultant to be when it grows up? <laughs> I wanted to, I actually have in my mind just four different products that it's going to give out okay. um, for Bermuda or for people, mm-hmm. you know, that they can come to for. I wanted to definitely be that, I guess, one stop two-stop shop yeah, to go yeah, through yeah. when it comes to it all. Mm-hmm. You know, I want us to be able to use 
and utilize our res our Bermuda resources as in the, the lawyers and those persons that can sing at the funerals. I yeah. want it to be, this is where you, you can get them. All of those that okay. actually do the obituaries and yeah. write them up or do different ways because now it's becoming extravagant. Yeah. Some people have it, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. But I also want people to know that if you have a budget, let's work and see how we can provide we can what you want within, within your that budget. budget. Okay. Exactly. You know, it, it's, we hear, okay, 10,000, 12,000. I've had to do my father's for no less. Yeah. 4,000. Right, so right. You kind of had to figure out how you work that. Right. It was doable. Okay. You know. So it sounds to me like you wanted to be like a full service kind of wraparound support. Yes. So come to us and we will. You know? Exactly. <laughs> we will take care of it all. Like once you come here, you don't have to worry about anything else. Yes. Um, I think that is wonderful. I just want to say congratulations. Thank you. I do think it's a needed service and it's just important for people to change how they think about death and yes. what is required to get ready for it. And you have the ability, based on what you said, to write your final chapter and exactly. why not take it? Exactly. Right? Well, I love it. <laughs> How can people, if they want to learn more, find out more, how can they get in touch with you? So they can go onto my website, okay. www. Sorry, www. <laughs> BlueLilyConsultant.org. Okay. And then there's our sound number, which is seven zero five six seven six two. Okay. And either way, we can reach out to you. We do have a small Facebook page and an Instagram page as well. Okay. And we'll get back to you. Whatever you all right. Well, I love it. I want to thank you for coming and talking to us. Thank you for having me. About your journey um, and the support that you provide, which I think is very, very much needed. Yes. So thank you for it. minding your business with us today. Thank you for having me. And remember, if you don't mind your business, who will? <laughs>Thanks for tuning in to Mind Your Business with me, your host, Jamila Lodge. Tune in next week, Thursday at 4 p.m. Because if you don't mind your business, who will? Mind Your Business is brought to you by BEDC. Bermuda business starts here.